What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to yet another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to profitably trade SPY in 2023. But real quick, as always, if you guys do find value in this video, make sure to smash that like button as well as clicking that subscribe and that bell icon. It would mean the absolute world to me. But without further ado, let's hop into the video. So real quick, in case you guys did not know, I do have a 450 page book on Amazon titled The New Age of Technical Analysis. So if you guys do want to learn more about my overall day trading and swing trading strategy, in a 450 page book make sure to check it out again the new age of technical analysis on amazon the link will be down in the description anyway so how to trade spy profitably in 2023 there is one strategy that i have specifically been using on spy and qqq but this video is on spy that i have found to be very very profitable so with spy first off i ended up talking about this in last week's video I've noticed that intervals of five tend to be a pretty strong area of support and resistance. So if we just put on this chart right here, let's put 400 and then let's put 395 and then let's put 390. You can see that today we ended up rejecting that 400 level pretty hard. If we go back and let's find a good example. Sometimes we just break right through with these levels. It's not like every time we come up to it or down to it, it is going to have price action, but they are pretty accurate like right over here you can see 390 we hit it to a t and then dropped over here rejected 390 pulled back again and then if we go on over to 395 you can see that we pretty much hit it right here and then pulled back and then during the day later in the day because you can see right here as we broke below it, it ended up flushing to the downside but then later in the day you can see we found support 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 so these intervals of five i started marking them on my chart especially like intraday like if you're watching a one minute time frame and the level two when we approach these areas you can tell on the level two that there are a lot of buyers or sellers that start participating in the market so those five dollar intervals they're more so psychological areas of support or resistance that we do want to know about now other than plotting those intervals of five i also plot the previous day's high so as you can see the high point right here at 399.1 what ended up happening once we finally broke above it today we saw a huge push to the upside all the way up to that 400 so i do like to mark the previous day's high as long as price is near that level so let's say that spy was trading all the way down at like 395 i'm more than likely not going to plot the previous day's high just because that's so far away but if we started trading up into that area then i would plot it and then the other level i end up plotting is the previous day's low as you can see, we were trading all the way up at 398 this morning. So I'm not going to plot the previous day's low just because that is way down here at 393.34. So only if price were trading near this level would I plot it because previous day's high and low do become areas of support and resistance as well. And it can assist us in our trading decisions. Now, other than that, I'm also watching the previous day's close. So as you see, previous day's close on SPY was at 398.50. What did we reject right in the pre-market? That exact level couldn't hold above it here, couldn't hold above it here, couldn't hold above it here or here. Then we finally broke above it. Then it became support two times in a row. And then we saw the push to the upside. So previous days close. Again, I will only plot it if price is near it. Now, other areas of support and resistance that I want to know about SPY are the pre-market lows. That tends to be a pretty strong area as well as pre-market highs. So again, if we're near those levels, I will plot them. So those are basically my default points of support and resistance. And then other than that, I will plot like higher time frame support or resistance or very strong trend line. So like right now, we're getting very close to a very strong weekly trend line, which is right there. So the weekly trend line, actually, I think we, yeah, we ended up hitting it today and rejecting it. Last week, it was around like 400.6. This week, we ended up rejecting it pretty hard. So I will plot areas of strong support or resistance. Also look for any chart patterns. Those are going to be huge on SPY, symmetrical triangles, bull flags, bear flags, etc. But then other than that, the strategy that I found to be very, very profitable on SPY and QQQ has been Fibonacci retracement. So if you guys have not seen my Fibonacci video, make sure you guys watch that. It's like a 30 minute free class that I did on how to use Fibonacci. But a trade that we ended up taking today based off of Fibonacci was this spy bounce literally right at the bottom so the way that i ended up finding this level was taking the pre-market low at this 396.88 all the way up to this high right here so we don't know that this is the high until price started pulling back 
as price started pulling back that's when i ended up drawing my fib specifically said live in team bull i am looking for a bounce at 397.7 so as spy started trading down towards that level price slightly broke below and then reclaimed that's when we got long with our stop loss right below this low right here and we ended up riding this trade all the way up into 400 which was when we fully exited so that was an absolutely beautiful trade but like i said these fibs i have noticed to be very very accurate on spot now things like meta and apple i've noticed that they're not as accurate but for some reason they are super super accurate on spy and qqq as well as ex so again make sure you guys do watch that fibonacci video because we've just been nailing tops and bottoms on spy and qqq using the fibs so again i have found that to be very very profitable for me all you need to do is determine where the low point and the high point is and then you're able to watch that area for a potential bounce or reject now after using the fibs also looking for confluence between spx spy and es so after i'm doing my analysis on spy i'm also paying attention to like whole psychological numbers on SPX. So like SPX 4000, 3950, 3900. I'm not really doing like analysis on ES. I'm kind of just looking for those whole psych numbers and then seeing how SPY reacts when we end up hitting that level. So again, 3950, 4000, uh 4050 stuff like that. That's pretty much all I use SPX for. Sometimes there is like a little divergence in price between SPX and then SPY because some days we'll be looking at SPY and SPY is actually downtrending, but at the same time something like SPX is forming a bull flag. It's happened many, many times. So if SPX is bull flagging but it looks like SPY is pulling, I either one won't take the trade or I'm going to see if SPX does end up breaking out of that bull flag. Because if it does break out of that bull flag, then I'm going to be looking to trade calls to the upside on SPY. So again, I do like to look for some confluence between SPX and SPY. And then on top of that, I'm also watching ES. So personally with ES, I've noticed that VWAP specifically on ES is very, very accurate. So sometimes I'll take bounces or rejects just based off of ES coming down or coming up to its VWAP level. So if we just look back, what is this? Uh, I think last Monday, we can see, uh, just imagine that the market was open at this point. You can see that ES came right down to VWAP, support, support, pushed up in price. And then as the market opened, what do we see? ES came down, hit VWAP, and then ended up pushing to the upside. So again, just like SPX, sometimes SPY might look bearish, like in the morning it begins to pull, but you start looking at ES and you're like, oh, well, ES is coming right down to the VWAP. Let me either one, not take the trade or two, see if ES ends up bouncing because if it bounces, we can then look for upside moves on spot. So again, just like SPX, I'm also watching like whole side numbers on ES. But what I also do on ES is I also look at the fibs because sometimes these fibs are going to line up exactly together. Sometimes they don't line up at all and ES actually has a different fib level that we can watch. So looking at ES today, we can see that we had that 40 30 reject at that 61.8. So the other day we came pretty close to it, ended up coming back down. But today you can see, or actually in the last four hours, you can see that we came up to the level, tried to hold above it, ultimately could not, and then price ended up flushing. If we go to a five minute time frame, you can see that price could not hold above it. We finally got one candle to hold above and then it immediately came right back down. So that would be a short entry right there. Stop loss right above the level. And as you see, ES ended up flushing all the way down towards 4,002. So I'm also doing analysis on ES just because the futures move SPY. So if we're doing our analysis on ES and we see confluence between the analysis with ES and SPY, it makes it a lot higher probability. But again, sometimes there will be something on ES that we don't see on SPY and SPY is going to follow what ES ends up doing. So pretty much the moral of this video is, first off, the overall strategy with SPY, it's a lot more simple in my opinion than it used to be. Uh, intervals of five Fibonacci levels, pre-market high, pre-market low, previous day high and low, and then uh, previous days close, looking for confluence with SPX as well as ES. And then on ES, I'm watching stuff like VWAP. I'm looking for the fibs, strong areas of support and resistance. And then with SPX, it's more so just, again, looking for confluence. Uh, sometimes they will diverge where SPX looks bullish and SPY looks bearish. If that's the case, then I'll go off the technicals on SPX. 
But other than that, those intervals of 50 I pay attention to and then strong areas of support and resistance. But yeah, that's going to wrap up this video on how to trade SPY profitably in 2023. So as always, if you guys did find value in this video, make sure to smash that like button as well as clicking that subscribe and that bell icon. It would mean the absolute world to me. Don't forget to check out my book, The New Age of Technical Analysis on Amazon, 450 pages. But yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed. Other than that, everybody have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video.